Welcome back to the Dart Language Tour. Today we're talking about sets. Similar to a map, similar to a list, but uh, neither of those things. It's a um, an unordered collection of unique items. Uh, similar to, there we go, if I can highlight something. So it's, remember a, a list was an ordered collection of items. They didn't have to be unique. Um, but a set is an unordered, similar to a map, collection of unique items. Okay. Um, Dart support for sets is provided by set literals and the set type. Okay, so those are two ways that they support it. Um, here's a simple Dart set using a set literal. All right, let's play around with this. Okay, here's our main function. Get rid of these comments. Thank you very much. All right, so we have this this variable called halogens, um, and let's just print it so we can do something with it. Okay. So there's our set. Everything's unique. Um, let's say if we try to uh, duplicate iodine. Okay, we run that, we get a little warning. Down here, a little info that says two elements in a set literal shouldn't be equal. Change or remove the duplicate element. Okay, it didn't cause a, a compile time error, um, but if we were intending to be able to use that twice, um, we're not using the right data type, uh, or the right type. So let's get rid of that again. Okay. And we'll run that so we get the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, a variable right now. Halogens, if we tap into that variable, um, because it is a set, these are the methods that we get to uh, operate on the set. Um, so we can find the length just like you can in a list. Uh, you can get the first value. Uh, so even though it's unordered, because it's defined uh, like this, I think it's going to bring back uh, fluorine. So it's it's interesting that they they call it an unordered collection. Um, so all that means, obviously, if you can call first on a set and expect it to bring back the first one that's defined in the literal, uh, that 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 makes you think that it has some type of ordering. Um, I think all that means when they say it's unordered is it is not like a list in the sense that you can call uh, the zeroth element to get uh, fluorine. So for example, you can't do something like this. Okay, the operator, um, these square brackets, isn't defined for the type set um, of string. Okay, so we can't do that. It's, it's unordered in that sense. <clears throat> But we can call dot first. Um, I assume there's probably some. Uh, you could extend the set class and define second, third, and so on. Um, you can say, is it empty? Is it not empty? Uh, so these are Boolean uh, methods here. Return a Boolean value. I assume they return Boolean. I don't know why they don't have that little arrow bool thing. Because um, that's going to say, is it empty? It's false. It has things. Okay, that's a, yeah, so that's false. Um, okay, so that's curious. Uh, single, you so say you have last, you get the last element. Okay. Do, do, do. You can um, iterate over them and, and query, like, are there any that satisfy a particular. Um, so for example, I think you might say, are there any that are chlorine? You know, is this how you use the any? No, it's not. String can't be assigned to the parameter type bool. Maybe you have to use that a different way. Okay, that could be. So you pass in a function and then do your test. So is this so then my local variable, so this is gonna be one of the set things, right? Um, it's one at a time. Uh, it's a, these are halogens, so let's just call this halogen. 
So is the halogen that I'm passing in, is it equal to fluorine? Are there any that satisfy that? Okay, and I'm not using that correctly either. Mm, no. Do I need this little doodad right there? And then I would need to, it's closed off. Nope, I'm printing that. Okay, maybe that works. Okay, so are there any halogens that are equal to chlorine? Now from, so I come from the Ruby world. I would really like to just have the, the experience. Um, so for example, in, in Ruby, you can say any, and then you would have your block of code and say halogen, and then you would say halogen. It's kind of the same thing. Is it equal to fluorine? Okay, so that's what Ruby looks like. Um, so when you convert one to the other, you still have this sort of um, local block variable halogen that's it's extracting you know on the first iteration it takes fluorine it takes chlorine the next time bromine um, okay so that's your local block variable this is how you do it in dart it's this little uh, this thing in parentheses okay um, to open the block to pass to any um, instead of using curly braces like the block notation in Ruby um, we have parentheses. <clears throat> that kind of throws me off, I think, because I think it's going to just take, you know, something, something a little bit easier. And then also, instead of having the rocket symbol here, we're just able to operate on that block variable directly. Okay, so this is something I'm getting used to as well. Let's comment that out. I don't have them turned on. Um, if I wasn't doing that, I would have to use the block in this case. Can you do that on one line? I don't know that you can. Can you? Right? Like that? Because now it's expecting maybe that. In my return, is that okay? There are a lot of places in Dart where you can get tripped up um, going from the, the fat arrow uh, way of doing it to the, the sort of block notation, curly brace notation. You know, you got to have a semicolon, you got to have a return statement. Um, it's just part of the language, so you just got to learn it, I guess. Okay, got a little carried away on that one. Let's, uh, let's go back to just printing halogens. Let's see, where were we? Okay, yeah, we were just looking at the, um, the different methods that you can call, and we just went down the any path. So a set is very similar to an array or a list um, and a map, but it's different in the sense that it's more array-like uh, given that you don't have key value pairs, you just have values. Um, but it's, it's, it's like a map or a hash in the sense that um, it's unordered, um, even though you can call first and last. Um, I think you typically operate over a set and you, you, you run those methods like any or where um, to determine if uh, a given value is part of your set, and if so, then you do something with it. I think it's typically how that is used. Okay, so Dart infers here that the halogens is of the type set string. Okay, so if you didn't want to have a variable and have it figure that out uh, at runtime, you could specifically say, oops, it's a set of strings, okay? Um, so I can add a new thing like fluorine, cl okay, these are all, um, let's call it fluttering. That's our new chemical, our new halogen that we just discovered. 
Okay, and there we go. It's part of the set. Um, if I change this to var, it's going to be okay. But if instead I put like the uh, the atomic number or something, whatever that happens to be. Um, see, now I can do it because I have var if I set this back to set string. I'll probably get an error. Okay, so they need to be, um, <clears throat> they can be mixed in here, uh, but it, it, with a var, if you, but if you're specifically saying I need a set of strings, you can't uh, add that, that number anymore. Okay. Um, okay, so Dart has the type inference. Um, uh, if you try to add the wrong type, the analyzer raises a runtime error. We just saw that. Good, good, good. All right, so we create an empty set. Um, so typically, sometimes people declare an empty bucket of some sort, and then they operate and put things into it, and they return it later. Um, to do that with uh, a set, because a map was created first, in the dark world, I think is what they say here. Um, you have to you have to specify a little bit differently, and this is kind of one of those things that throws me off a little bit. Um, I also want you to be formatted in line. Okay. So if we say let's say print names dot runtime type. Okay, I'm expecting that to be a a set of strings, linked hash set. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what if instead of doing this, I, I did the whole, uh, like the halogens thing, right? Hey, we have these, these things are unique, right? Okay, we just have strings. Okay, it's still a linked hash set. I think that's, that might be a, um, a more specific way of like what they're calling it under the hood, a linked hash set. Um, so, Pay attention to that, that's interesting. Keep that in your back pocket for a second. Um, so this was empty. We had specified that we only want strings to be able to enter this set. Okay, that's that. Um, I think you can do that as well. No, you can't, okay. The name of the class set can't be included in a set literal, so that's interesting. Um, you can't do that, but you can, like, for example, over here, I can't just say of string because it's like, oh, like what? Like this is this is kind of nonsense, right? Um, because that's the internal type for the object. Um, so I would need to do something like that. Now this is very specific. Names is going to be a set of strings, <clears throat> and this thing I'm initializing over here is also uh, an empty set that can only accept strings. Okay, so these things together are very strictly defined. Okie doke. Okay, yeah, what were those comments? Um, ah, okay. So they're saying that works too. And what we've seen is what I just showed you. Okay, but it, so this is this is super strict, almost like overdefined. It's overspecified. Um, it's the most verbose way to say it. Uh, but since you're saying it on the left as well, um, this is not going to be interpreted as a um, as a map, okay? Okay, so it's still going to return linked hash set. If I take our names, now it's just going to be um, linked hash map, okay? JS because we're here in the browser, um, and it doesn't know what kind of keys and value types it's going to have, okay? So let's put that back. So that is there. They're, they're saying that works too. Um, and we just showed um, this last part, which is that if you don't say that it's a um, something here, you know, what does that do? Expected a type name. Yeah, that's a very helpful um, error message. Cool. There's our type name. Or you could have a set of integers, right? Linked hash set int. Okay. You could have double. It's going to say linked hash set double. There it goes. Okay. Can you have a type of sets? Like sets within a set? Like an erector set? Yeah, look at that. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, and 
but now that's also inferring it to be dynamic. What if I wanted a set of strings? Okay, so now we're just getting really silly. Um, but there could be a use case for this. Um, so now in names, maybe I want to um, add. I want to so 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 now because I've defined it as a a set of strings inside the set. Um, instead of adding just like any old string to my set, I have to actually add um, a set of strings. Okay, and I, I just have one element in here. Okay, so that is what that's doing. Um, and now when I print names, <clears throat> Okay, so there's my set in a set. Um, so it's just very verbose, and sometimes it's it gives me a headache to read and look at. Um, maybe in the future there will be easier ways to make it more developer friendly, uh, but that's just what it is for now. Cool. Okay, so the syntax for map literals is similar. Uh, we saw that a little bit playing around. Um, the map literals came first, uh, that defaults if you wanted to be explicit. So for example, um, we have explicitly said here, for example, let's just go back to a regular um, set of strings. Uh, I think if you wanted to be explicit with a map, you might have to do something like that. Let's find out. Ah, we need to do runtime type. Okay, just like that, let's see what it says. Okay, yeah, so it's a linked hash. Oh, oh crap, yeah. <laughs> I just tripped myself up. Um, yeah, interesting. So an empty, using the empty hash by itself, or these empty curly braces, if I didn't have this map de declar declaration here, um, but what I've said is I'm expecting a set of maps. Okay, so whenever I add things to names, um, they need to be maps, right, with key value pairs. Um, if I just wanted an empty map, can I just say something like that maybe? Maybe that, maybe now I have an empty map. Okay, yeah, so there's my linked hash map. So that's the more, more verbose way to do it. <clears throat> Um, instead of just doing like that, but again, this is we're just comparing and contrasting maps and and sets. Um, is there also a way to do it with a set? Can you do that? So this is going to be a linked hash set. The type is dynamic. Um, oops. So if I want that, will that work? Okay, so now my linked hash set is, it wants some strings, and I think this is going to be the same thing as this, okay? So here on the, and, and just focus on the right side. Um, if I just had curly braces, that would be a map. To make it a set, I'm just gonna say, what, what kinds of things do I want in my set? Okay, these are strings. Um, if I wanted to, and, and, and so this is also the um, the literal notation because I've used these these little uh, curly braces. So this is, um, you know, I, I could also initialize it with some, some stuff here, right? Um, but it's, it's empty right now, but this is still the liter literal notation. <clears throat> um, and I have to put this here because it is empty. To do the same thing with using the set keyword, um, yeah, disregard those. Those are because I have these things named um, the same. Now it's just saying it's not used. Um, yeah, so a set of strings and then this empty uh, parentheses here, this is uh, constructing an instance of this set. Um, okay, so th those are kind of the two ways uh, to do it. Uh, depending on your use case and your familiarity and, and what feels right for your program. Uh, those are the two ways. Cool. Okay. <clears throat>
if you forget that, it's going to become a map of dynamic, dynamic. Okay, we saw all that, that's great. Um, adding items, we did this earlier as well, um, where we could add an items, or if you already have a set, you can add all of those things. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is this is kind of interesting. Let's let's go into a little depth on this. Let's bring back our halogens because I want to show you something. We have that. Yeah. Okay. And like, I'm. You can call dot length. To, to like find out how many are in there. That's that part. Okay, so this this next part, uh, format please. Okay, what we have is a set of strings. Okay, so this is a set of strings. Um, here we can be more, more verbose. Okay, that's that's as uh, verbose as we can get. That's our halogens right there. Um, now we have this. Uh, this empty set uh, that's also expecting strings. Now, if we add flooring, uh, let's see what happens there, actually. I'm just going to run it even without printing. I just want to see if I get an error. Um, it probably adds the second one, but then will only return, I believe it was, the unique values. So let's print elements and see. <clears throat> and, and so, so how does, um, and, and in fact, I just want to add flooring and do that. Okay. So elements dot add. Okay, so that's that's just doing that one thing. If I said halogens and add, so now we're adding um, a value that's already part of that. Um, so you can see it kind of like strips it out, compresses it, even though we added it here. Okay. Let's go back to elements, um, right, because this is what I wanted to do. Originally, when we started out, empty set, add flooring, print elements, we just have one value, that's flooring. Now, when we add halogens, um, let's see what it does. Okay, it's still gonna return the unique values. Now, the interesting thing about this is when you read this, you might expect, we start out with this empty, uh, this empty set. We add flooring, okay, there's that. Now, when we, if we were to just add halogens, um, I would expect there to be in here another set, right? Because this is what halogens is up here. It's, it's a set, right? So now we have fluorine. Um, no, it's, it's not spelled like that. Duh. I should know. Okay, blah, 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 fluorine, etc. cetera. Um, if we were to just add it, I would expect it to do this. But because we're saying add all, I think it goes inside one level deeper and pulls out the values and then appends them. Okay, so what would happen if instead of it saying add all halogens, we just add halogens. Now try to print elements. What's it saying? The argument type set string can't be assigned to the parameter type string. See, so it's it's expecting strings, um, but because halogens themselves isn't is is actually just like a set of strings. Um, you can't add it in like that. So at all is a little different. And in fact, if we say on this dot at all, okay, it's expecting, um, it's different than add. Add adds a string, just the value. Okay, at all, uh, you don't give it a string. You give it um, an iterable of type string. So set is an iterable. Um, and, 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 the, and the, the elements themselves. <clears throat> that's, that's, they need to be of that type. Okay, if I wanted to say add, um, 
again, fluttering. There's our new, <clears throat> our new chemical. We can't do that because now that's that's a string, okay? Um, so that's the difference in add and add all. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, you can get the length of, of um, your set. And then finally, let's get down here to this last bit. Um, you can create a compile time constant. Um, we explain this in the list uh, section, the list video. And you just put const on the right side before that. Uh, so here, we do something like that. Okay. Um, we're saying right now that halogens isn't ever used, so let's just print it. Okay. All right, so everything's fine. Um, previously, without const, uh, this wasn't defined at compile time. It just had instructions to create and assign at runtime. Uh, but now at compile time, this is this is already set. So uh, this is actually a really good example because I don't think they're adding any new halogens to the periodic table. So this is kind of like a reference uh, constant value that can be used. Okay, so that's all that means. Okay, similar to lists, um, and probably in maps too, you have the spread and the optional spread operator. Um, and then you have the collection if, collection for, just like lists do. I'm not gonna go over that again. Um, again, that's in the list video if you wanna see how that's used. Okay, and again, this is just the language tour. Uh, you can go into depth, uh, into generics and sets themselves uh, in the library tour. Okay, so that would take you over to uh, the core library tour and it goes in a lot more depth. Cool. All right, thanks everybody. Catch you next time.